Ai va fatto un della città largo La 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 a fresco is a type of painting where the pigment is applied directly onto wet plaster, and when the plaster dries, the pigments are locked in and become a part of the wall. This technique is often used to decorate interiors, and though it's most often connected to the Italian Renaissance, it actually dates back to ancient Rome, as far back as 200 BCE. Ancient paintings are a somewhat rare find. The pigments are vulnerable to damage as they're exposed to light and moisture and can deteriorate quickly if not properly cared for. In fact, most of the ancient Roman frescoes that have been excavated are found in Pompeii and the surrounding cities. When Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, the Asheville ended up preserving a lot of ancient Roman artifacts, including wall paintings, which would have been lost to time otherwise. What was an unfortunate tragedy for the ancient Pompeians is for us an incredible snapshot into what life looked like at the time. Art historians have managed to define four main styles of wall paintings. The first style of ancient Roman fresco is called incrustation. It dates back from 200 to 60 BCE and was meant as a sort of faux finish designed to imitate the look and feel of large marble slabs. The second style is architectural and dates from 60 to 20 BCE. It featured everyday objects such as vases, tables, windows, and columns. The subjects were rendered to create an illusion of realism with the intent of opening up the sometimes cramped interior spaces of Roman homes. The third style is ornamental and dates from about 20 BCE to 20 AD. The style developed under the reign of Emperor Augustus. Here, the aesthetic moves away from illusion and toward ornamentation. Monochromatic walls were broken into sections by only a few architectural and ornamental elements, such as columns or candelabra. Each section contained smaller framed paintings and had a similar setup to an art gallery. The advantage to this was that patrons and artists could easily change things up by repainting one of the framed pictures instead of the entire wall. The fourth and latest style, dated from 20 AD to 79 AD, is called intricate. It incorporated a lot of elements from the earlier styles. However, the goal was no longer to portray a believable space. Instead, the style tended toward excess and chaos, a direct contrast to the ornamental style that came before it. The imagery in these paintings were heavily influenced by Hellenistic Greek art and mythology, especially of Dionysus, the god of wine, merriment, and theater. Other subjects included landscapes, gardens, and still lives. Perhaps one of the most noted examples of the intricate style of fresco is the painted garden in the Villa of Livia at Prima Porta. The painted garden decorated all four walls of a room called a triclinium, which is a formal dining room of sorts. The room is dug into rock, not quite subterranean, but partially underground, which makes it easier to keep cool in the summertime. The objects in the foreground are rendered in sharp detail and high contrast, while the elements of the background are painted in lighter colors and rendered with less detail. This creates the illusion of depth through aerial perspective, that hazy atmospheric effect you get when you look at things from far away. The fresco depicts a garden brimming with plants and wildlife. Yellow birds flit from tree to tree, and branches are loaded with bright yellow and red fruit. White, pink, purple, and red flowers ornament the background. A golden yellow fence lines the bottom portion of the walls in the foreground, as if the viewer were standing on some sort of patio overlooking the garden. The painted garden is one of many examples of fresco being used to transform a closed space. Imagine for a moment that you were an ancient Roman looking to escape that summer heat. You retreat to your partially underground triclinium, and instead of being met with a claustrophobic, windowless room, you enter a bright, airy garden of soothing blues and greens. There's a sense of movement throughout the piece, as if a refreshing breeze was blowing through all the trees and flowers. There's something really impressive about the use of color in this piece. It brings to mind the 19th century Impressionists and their use of color to create depth and atmosphere. The bright, warm yellows and reds of the smaller elements of the piece are directly complementary to the blues and greens that dominate the majority of the fresco. They contrast well in this composition. The warm colors make nice focal points without overwhelming the overall cool atmosphere of the piece. 
Roman homes often utilized a mixture of the four styles of fresco, and in addition to opening up the walls of the room, the artwork served a few other functions. The paintings were used as a form of social orientation. The number and quality of the frescoes suggested the amount of resources the household had access to and indicated the position of the family within their community. The art also helped guide guests around the house. Important visitors would follow the brighter, more intricate decoration, while servants and slaves would stick to the darker hallways.